Hello there, I'm Philip Magnus and this is my latest World of Warcraft impression video. I'm talking about Legion, obviously, and today's topic is the latest The Third Zone I have been playing through Stormheim. And yes, it's all about Vrickle and the Alliance versus the Horde. These are two separate things, by the way. Two separate quest lines, and they are both fairly good. But let's start with the Vrickle. I haven't seen the the likes of these giant lovely people since all the way back in the day of Wrath of the Lich King. Ah, Northrend. I'll admit, I didn't quite miss that race, but I do like me some counterfeit Norse mythology. There is something just so idiotically charming in the way Blizzard recycles, remakes and renames Norse gods, worlds and so on and so forth. And so Hela becomes Hela, Odin becomes Odin with a Y instead of an I, and Heimdall becomes Himdal, and so on and so forth. A large portion of the time in Stormheim is spent looking for another of those Pillars of Eternity of Creation. Sorry, Pillars of Eternity. Wrong game, wrong franchise. Another of the Pillars of Creation, the Ages of whatever. I forgot the name. Sorry about that. I have killed while searching for this Ages demon-infused Vrickle, a bunch of just vanilla demons. I have butchered bears for their fat, fat hearts. And I have even freed Weird and the Dragons, which I don't know how to connect with the rest of the dragon mythology in the world. Are they nether dragons? Are they something else entirely? I have no clue whatsoever. What I do know is that I made friends among them, and a few memorable ones at that. What else did I do? Oh yeah, I even helped a tribe of gigantic owls, a kind of moonkin, well, I, I helped them try to survive the wild and dangerous world outside of their cave, only to create a ritual which somehow got the attention of a giant tender dragon, which for some reason burned them all to a crisp. That was cruel and weird and very, very, very unusual. And last but not least, I jumped from cliffside to cliffside with uh, what was virtually a bathclaw or a grapple gun, if you will. Anyway, I enjoyed a few of the characters in this quest zone. Sorry, in this uh, world zone. The main villain, though, Vrickle-wise, was a bland, angry god king. Needless to say, nothing but threats and... Dramatic monologues came from his general proximity to me. He was not really threatening, and it is my opinion that, well, if you want to intimidate someone, you should use fewer words and more actions. Really, what the God King of the Vrickel, who is, by the way, allied, allied with the Burning Legion, did. What he did was absolutely nothing. He just went around threatening me, showing around, trying to slow me down by destroying a bridge at one point, which only made no sense because I had to use a grapple gun anyway. Yeah, it was a weak villain, that's for sure. And of course, I defeated him once in the map and another time um, in the Halls of Valor dungeon, for which I will make another video. It's an exceptional dungeon. I absolutely loved it, and I'm going to talk about it in due time, when I get to heroic, mythical, and so on and so forth. Anyway, the intimidation factor is severely lacking, in villains nowadays, at least where Stormheims are concerned. My favorite bit of Stormheim on a purely artistic basis is the bastardization, 
let's call it, of Hell, the Norse mythology Hell, which is renamed in Blizzard's game as Helheim. The ships, all serpent-like, the atmosphere, Helios and her tentacles, it's one hell of a visual, and a very dramatic one at that. Quite an efficient one too. I just absolutely loved how near and how how much it felt like a piece of a mythology's underworld. It was very effective and very ambient, absolutely atmospheric. The Vrickel and Pillar of Creation bit, however, come after a rather sizable prologue that is very much dependent on whether you play as the Alliance or the Horde, seeing as I'm a Horde player. I got an excellent prologue during which I was attacked by the Worgen, led by Gen Greymane, and alongside with Nathanos Blightcaller, I actually defeated the aforementioned Worgen leader atop an airship. After a sizable scenario, which I spent boarding different ships, moving from ship to ship, uh, collecting uh, very explosive barrels filled with poison, toxic, toxic poison, don't you just love it? And an all around good time was to be had by all. And mostly me. I didn't actually see anyone else doing the scenarios. I was doing the scenario, but that did not stop me from enjoying it a hell of a lot. The most awesome moments in Stormheim, I would say, come courtesy of our very undead, very ambitious war chief, Sylvanas Windrunner. Her continual quest for immortality and continued existence of her forsaken has been going on since, let's see, what is it, what has it been? Wrath of the Lich King? Yeah. But she has never quite managed to find a solution to her problem. You see, the Forsaken, for the simple reason of being dead, cannot procreate. And that is quite difficult, because they die. And Sylvanas, needless to say, would rather her forsaken not be wiped out as a nation. Because while all forsaken come from different undead races, supposedly, even if their models look almost exclusively like humans and blood elves, uh, sorry, high elves, um, they have another nationality, so to speak. And Sylvanas would like to safeguard that and leave it as something greater than a momentous passing by of the winds. Anyway, she has not fared too well on that quest yet. Actually, quite the opposite. She was actually quite close, um, managing to, in fact, trap... Uh, Norse mythology spirit, whose name is right now, I think, um, what is her name? Aye, Eir, and she managed to use a magical lantern called the Soul Cage to bind the Valkyr, this gigantic Valkyr like no other, not unlike the Valkyrs that have served Sylvanas in the past. Anyway, Gengle, uh, Greymane, lets out a rather unpleasant howl and manages, after a short combat with Sylvanas, break the soul cage and free the Valkyr. And of course that is very, very unpleasant for Sylvanas. A failure and the Banshee Queen does not take well to failures. Particularly cool is a meeting a little bit earlier on in the quest line between the Banshee Queen and Helle, during which the player can understand that there has been some sort of a deal between the goddess of the underworld and our glorious leader. Whatever that deal, we do not know. 
but I'm certain that we will eventually find out and it might in fact come to come back and bite us in the asses but hey I don't know M might just as well not we'll see we will see I'm sure of it um, any other impressions from Stormheim? Let me think, let me think. Ah, yes, the music. The music was once again exceptional. There was a very familiar team from Wrath of the Lich King, one of the main Northern teams, this time slightly, or rather reworked by quite a large margin. Nevertheless, it was a fantastic team and I absolutely loved hearing it again. And, of course, the atmosphere of the whole zone is very reminiscent of some Northrend zones, especially the ones that dealt heavily with the Vrikul and their mythology and culture. And I absolutely love that. I really did. We fought a large variety of enemies and they were entertaining. Of course, the House of Valor dungeon, whose entrance lies ahead, has been so far the best dungeon I have played in the expansion, at least on a purely atmospheric base. Very much a piece out of Valhalla. <sighs> I really enjoyed Stormheim. I am now looking forward to playing the last of the low-level zones, and getting to 110 and getting my feet wet in Surama and some endgame content. I will keep you informed and I will keep posting these videos. If you enjoy this, please share, like and subscribe. And of course, tell all your friends about me. Thank you guys for watching and I'm going to leave you off with this last video, the fight between Sylvanas Windrunner and Gen Greyman. See you guys next time. Bye! What is it? I have no time for games. What are we if not slaves to this torment?